This theory would begin after the events of the Tournament of Power. All the gods would be angry with the warrior Goku and Vegeta. Damn this time, we were lucky. But if that Goku continues to do his thing, I will have no doubt that someday they will engage Zenosama. And this really erases everything Goku and his partner Vegeta are a danger to all existence. We have to do something about them. Vermont makes an announcement to all the gods for a meeting. Meanwhile, Whis and Beerus would be in his palace resting. Whis would look at Beerus strange. What's up, my lord Beerus? Since a while ago, you've been sitting there. Tell me, what are you thinking? Whis, I have thought about it a lot, and I've come to the conclusion that Goku and Vegeta are a danger to all the universes. Whis remained silent. Whis, we have to do something. I can smell danger. When that pair are near the king of everything, I understand, sir. At that very moment, Whis receives a call from the god Vermouth. Vermouth says, Beerus, we've gathered all the gods in my universe to talk about an important topic. I'm going to be very direct, exactly about this Goku and Vegeta from your universe. I can already imagine where this is going. That's right. Those guys are a danger to all your universes. I understand. I will go right now. Whis and Beerus travel to universe 11. All the gods would be reunited. Then what are we going to do? That Goku and Vegeta are a real nuisance. The trust they have in Zenosama is unforgivable. Someday they will eliminate us completely. Champa says, It's true. We have to exterminate them before something bad happens. If we do that, Zenosama will murder us. Don't forget that Son Goku is his friend. Got it. In my universe, on Earth, those two know how to use a room to train. It is a dimension certainly unknown. If we lock them in there and destroy their only entrance, then they will not be able to get out of there. And if they die inside, then it will just be an accident. All the gods agree with Beerus' plan. Beerus would say, I will take care of everything. Beerus goes to the earth of his universe. He arrives and meets Bulma. Bulma says, Mr. Beerus, what is the reason for your visit? Beerus replies, Bring everyone here. Hurry, it's important. The future of this universe depends on this. Bulma gathered all of the warriors. What's up, Mr. Beerus? You sent for us. I wonder what it's about and why Goku and Vegeta are not here. They're not here because they are the subject to be discussed. Beerus would tell the warriors all about his plan. They would be shocked to hear Beerus' plan. Krillin says, What do you mean a threat to the universe? We will never do something like that. Goku and Vegeta are our friends, and we owe them a lot for saving us again and again from danger. That's right. I won't do something so evil against my father or Mr. Vegeta. What's wrong with you? You got a screw loose? We will never do anything like that. Beerus raised his hand. He destroys Bulma with his Hakai. It seems the confidence went to his head. Remember that I am a god. I will not stand another insolent. Piccolo gets ready to fight, to which Beerus defeats Piccolo. This would threaten everyone present. This was a decision of all the gods. If you do not cooperate, you will have to deal with me and all the gods. Stop believing that you are equal to us. Either you follow the plan or I will destroy this planet. The hurt Piccolo would say, Okay, we will do what you ask. Krillin says, But Piccolo! Don't say anything, Krillin. We nor Goku and Vegeta are no match for the gods. Besides, they count on the help of the angels. Whis turns his eyes. Very well. I see that you are ready, and you understand. Beerus and Whis return to their palace. The plan will be carried out as ordered by Beerus. Goku and Vegeta meet. What are you doing here, insect? Calm down, Vegeta. Gohan told me that Mr. Whis was looking for me to teach me a special training. The same thing Piccolo Insect told me? That's right. He told me to meet him in the time room. That's weird. I haven't seen Bulma in days either. Calm down. I don't know how to see Milk either. Vegeta and Goku arrive at the sacred temple. But if it is Whis... Whis replies, At last they arrive. Today, Mr. Bills asked me to train them. Since very soon, there will be another tournament of force, where all the universes will participate. Goku would be very surprised by the news and excited. Dende, something nervous, this would say, This room is ready, Mr. Whis. Goku says, Hello, Dende. You look strange. Vegeta felt that something was wrong. Krillin arrives flying to the tower. When he arrives, he would shout, I can't do this! Vegeta! Goku! It's a trap! The gods want to exterminate them, leaving them locked in the room of time! Vegeta would be surprised and say, Something strange! 
I sensed all this. So the gods turned against us? Beerus came threatening us. If we didn't do this, they would destroy the earth. That's why Piccolo and Gohan told them to come here. Even Beerus killed Bulma with his Hakai. Vegeta surprised said, What did you say? Beerus appears and says, You damn midget. Everything was going well. This is what you deserve for not obeying me? Beerus makes Krillin disappear with his Hakai. Krillin! Damn it! How dare you! Suddenly, Goku and Vegeta would be hit, being knocked out. The eleven gods of their angels appear. Champa approaches the body of Goku and Vegeta. This one kicks them. Champa says, Very well. Green boy, lock these guys up immediately. Dandy would notice him very nervous. To what comes out? Mr. Popo. This one would carry the body of the Saiyans. In an oversight, this one would keep a paper inside the pocket of Goku. The two Saiyans were locked in the room. Whis said, Lord Bills, formerly Majin Buu, and the fusion of the son of Goku and Vegeta, they were able to get out of there screaming with all their power opening other dimensions. Beerus says, What? Seriously? Wormoth says, That's no problem. Our angels can solve that. All the angels unite their staffs, forming a sealing power. Seal of the twelve angels combined. Vado says, Very well. It will be impossible for them to get out of here. The only way for those two to be more powerful than all the twelve angels together, which will be impossible, Champa says. Very good. So all the universes will be safer. They would spend a few hours inside the room. Goku and Vegeta wake up. Damn, what happened? These damned have locked us in. Damn Beerus, murdered Bulma. I swear I'll make him pay for this. Vegeta, we have to get out of here. Vegeta says, wait, Kakaroto. This room is not like before. These idiots modified it somehow. But we don't lose anything by trying. You're right. Let's try. Vegeta and Goku transform using their blue transformation. They scream at full power, but without any effect in the room. Vegeta says, I guessed it. These damn people modified the room. These damn gods have betrayed us. They lied to us to get us in here. Goku says, wait, Vegeta. Look. Goku notices a paper he had in his pocket. I see it's a note. Vegeta proceeds to read the note from Mr. Popo. Goku, Vegeta, I'm sorry, but the god Beerus threatened Dende not to say anything. I heard everything and that's why I leave you this note. I will look for the spears and ask the dragon to be immortal. In the room there is enough food for ten lives. I hope you can get out of there. Goku says, I see. It'll be a great help. Our only option will be to train. And when we are ready, we will come out of here. After a few days, Mr. Popo gathers all the spears. He calls the dragon, and together with Dende, he asks the dragon that the Saiyan Goku and Vegeta be immortal. Vegeta says, Kakarot, don't you feel something strange? Goku says, I think Mr. Popo already asked the dragon for our immortality. Perfect. Now we can train without worrying about anything. I swear that I will leave here, and with my own hands I will kill Beerus the insect. Goku and Vegeta would continue training for many years. They had trained a little more than eight years, which is worth almost 3,000 years in the room of time. They were already more powerful than any god destroyer. Goku could easily use the Ultra Instinct just like Vegeta. Besides, these two had discovered a new transformation. A transformation that they did not master. They could not endure for more than 30 seconds with this power. The power that this transformation gave them was very scary and very difficult to control. All their transformations had taken to a new level. Vegeta says, Kakarot, it's time. Goku replies, That's right, Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta use the Ultra Instinct. These shouting open several portals. Vegeta says, All right, it's time. Let's get in here. And they both enter the portal. After a long time locked in the room of time, these two try to leave the place. Goku and Vegeta would use the Ultra Instinct to escape using the same method that Majin Buu used. Effectively, these opened several dimensions. Goku said, Vegeta, we made it, but now which of them do we enter? Vegeta says, let's get in at once. Anyone chooses Kakarado fast. Goku would throw himself into a random dimension door. Vegeta follows. They would find themselves in a somewhat dark place. This is what frightened Goku and he would say, what is this? Vegeta would be lying on the floor. Vegeta replied, damn, this came to us unexpectedly. Damn, Kakarado, you couldn't pick a better place. Goku and Vegeta at the moment of entering a random dimension to leave the room of time, they had chosen a place where gravity was much heavier than in the room of time. What they didn't know was that the place was something similar to the old room. Its gravity was much heavier, as was the time. One minute on Earth equals 100 years within that dimension. Vegeta and Goku would rise. Goku said, Ugh, this place is very heavy. 
As soon as we entered, we it threw us on the floor. Very well, Vegeta. Let's try again. Vegeta says, Wait, Kakarot. Nothing will happen if we continue training. This place is much more complex than the previous room, Vegeta in his mind would say. Even so, with this transformation, the gravity of this place defeated us suddenly. It is very good place to continue training. Vegeta would continue and tell Goku, Kakarot, this is a good place to continue training. Maybe if we stay a good time in this place, we can master that new transformation. Goku says, You're right, Vegeta. Seems perfect to me. Although it will be very complicated to train here. Vegeta says, Do not put excuses, insect. We've come very strong. If we go out of here and manage to finish off the gods, it is more than possible that Zenosama or his father of Whis do not want to kill. We have to be prepared for everything, Goku said. I don't think little Zenosama does something like that. Vegeta says, You never know, Kakarot. Or maybe you don't want to master that power that we have not yet mastered. Goku says, It's true, Vegeta. Let's keep training. After Goku and Vegeta decide to stay in that room to become even stronger, Outside the time room, Zenosama had effectively made the decision to make another tournament of strength, but this time all 12 universes would participate. The rules were the same as in the previous tournament. This time Zenosama had made the decision to eliminate all the losing universes with the grand prize of nothing more and nothing less than the Super Spheres of the Dragon. The new tournament of force would take place after 35 Earth days. Beerus had informed the others. This time, everyone would participate with great concern, for they had neither Goku nor Vegeta after the 35 days have passed. The time would come to start the new tournament of power. All the destructive gods gather. Each universe brought its fighters. Champa would say, <laughs> Brother, that happens because that bitter face. This is your fault for getting rid of the two most powerful in your universe. Bira says, Shut up, Champa. Zenosama, where is Goku? He has to be here. Beerus replies, Great King Zenosama, Goku did not want to participate in this tournament. Apparently, he had important things to do. Zenosama would get very sad. Beerus would continue, But don't worry, Goku's son is here. He is also very powerful. Zenosama would say, If my friend Goku can't come, it's because he's really busy. No matter, let's start the tournament of power. The Daishinkan stares at Beerus. For the one who ordered Goku to be murdered without Zenosama suspecting anything was the Daishinkan himself. Daishinkan had commanded the gods of Universe 11 to gather all the gods to find a way to eliminate Goku and Vegeta from Universe 7. For he was aware of everything. The tournament of power would begin. Jiren said, So Goku will not participate this time. This time it will be easy to win. How boring. Goku continues. All right, Vegeta, it's time. That damn rat Beerus will pay, said Vegeta. Goku replied, We have already exceeded all the limits. I feel that we have been here for millions of years. Vegeta replies, So it is, insect. I also feel that we have been an eternity within this dimension. It was a great advantage to be immortal. I'm sure that those insects will not be able to do anything against us. Goku says, Wait, Vegeta. Look. Goku shows Vegeta a button. Vegeta says, What is that? Goku says, This button was given to be my Zenosama. Remember that time Zenosama of the future came to where we were when Black wanted to make his own? Vegeta says, That's right. Don't tell me you can call him here. Goku says, Not only that, but we can also teleport us to where he is. Vegeta would be impressed. This furious man would tell Goku, Damn, Kakaroto! After an eternity of years, you realize that? I thought you would be wandering in the dimensions. You're a hollow head. To which Goku would only laugh. <laughs> Don't be angry, Vegeta. Look at the good side. Thanks to my carelessness, we became very strong. If I had found it earlier, we wouldn't have mastered our new transformation. Vegeta replies, In that you are right. But that doesn't mean you're not an asshole. Goku says, Then Vegeta, come on. Goku presses the button teleporting next to Vegeta. All would be fighting with all their might in the tournament of power. Gohan would be facing a warrior from Universe 11. Dispo would say, Without the Saiyan Goku, it will be impossible for them to win this tournament. They are doomed to die. Toppo would say, It's a pity for you, but this time our universe will win. Beerus would laugh and say, This time I won't worry too much about my universe losing. In this tournament, only the inhabitants of the universes will be eliminated. This time the destroying angels and gods will be the exception. But that time three universes would be eliminated. Universe 1, 3, and 12. While Universe 7 only had Gohan left. 
All the others would be defeated by the other universes, for these were the goal of all because when Universe 7 won the first tournament of the Force, these would draw a great deal of depreciation from the other participants. Kohan would be very hurt. The other universes take advantage to take out out on the sand. Gohan is ejected by a big blow from Topo. Gohan says, Damn guys, excuse me, this happens to me for not continuing to train properly, Piccolo says. Quiet, Gohan, you did well. Plus this time, we fought with three fewer warriors. Majin Buu took Krillin's place and Frieza was killed by Beerus. It looks like this was planned. Gohan says, sorry Mr. Piccolo. You did well, son, said Piccolo. Daishinkan said, Great Zenosama, Universe 7 is disqualified. Zenosama would hesitate. I don't want to eliminate the universe of my friend Goku. Plus it was unfair. They fought with three warriors less. The Daishinkan said, Great King, if he doesn't, it wouldn't be fair to everyone. He has to. Plus if Goku was such a good friend, he would have left whatever he was doing to be here. Zenosama says, It is true. In that they are right. Zenosama raises his hand to eliminate Universe 7. As the warriors would stare at Zenosama, for many were waiting for the moment. Beerus would smile, just like Wiss. Gohan would only imagine his daughter's face from his wife and father. Father, sorry for letting you down in this way. Sorry for depending on your strength, to which Zenosama proceeds to destroy the universe. But it stops. For Goku and Vegeta had appeared in front of the king of all. Daishinkan, Beerus, Wiss, like all gods and angels would be very surprised. Zenosama would say, Goku, you here? I was told that you were busy and could not come to the strength tournament. Tell me you can fight. Goku says, Hello, little Zen. Of course, if, if I can, I'm ready to always fight. Gohan screams, Dad. Piccolo says, Goku, everyone in the tournament would be impressed. Vegeta would scream, Where are you, Beerus? Beerus would be very angry. Quitella would say, What is this? How come they came out? What do you refer to with how did they come out? The Daishinkan would look at Quitella in a very cold way. In a very nervous way, she responds saying, No, sir. I speak that they should participate in the tournament so that you have more fun, said Osama says. What a good idea. Goku, your universe just lost, but since they were missing fighters and fought at a disadvantage, you too can still participate. Vegeta would not take his eyes off Beerus. Goku would say, Vegeta, that seems to me like if we warm up a little before starting with this. Very well, Zen. We will participate. Vegeta would continue, Kakarot, do not forget that I will be the one in charge of Beerus. Goku would say, don't even mention it. Now let's defeat all these guys. Goku and Vegeta go down to the combat arena. To what Daishinkan in his mind would say, these damn people cannot follow a simple order. At the end of everything, I will be the one who must take care of everything. The only way to murder Zenosama is to make him experience terror firsthand. Thus it will be very vulnerable to any attack. Zenosama would say, very well. The tournament of power continues. The Daishinkan would say, Zenosama. Let Son Goku and Vegeta from Universe 7 participate in the Tournament of Power. All the warriors in the arena look coldly at Goku and Vegeta. Beerus would say, These damn! I wonder how did they come out? The only way out of that room was to overcome the power of all the angels together. In short, that's impossible. Champa would say, Beerus, how come they got out of the room? Beerus would reply, I have no idea. Maybe it can be. And Beerus remembers something. Beerus says, and that's why they appeared in front of Zenosama. It's because of the button that Zenosama himself handed to Goku. This damn bastard. Beerus would realize that Vegeta did not take his eyes off where he was. Beerus said, This damn one doesn't stop looking at me. I imagine he wants to fight with me. If they came out thanks to the button that Zenosama gave Goku, that they are not in danger is what that means. For a moment, he had thought that they surpassed the powers of all the angels together, but that is impossible. Beerus would smile and say, There are no threat. Vegeta would reply, Kakarot, let's finish with everything at once. I can't wait any longer. Goku would say, Very well, come on. Goku and Vegeta use the Super Saiyan Blue. All the gods are shocked by the great power of the Saiyans. A terrifying fight was about to begin. The Daishinkan says, Very well. The tournament of strength resumes. Piccolo replies, As always, Goku arriving late. I'm glad my father and Vegeta could get out of that room. That's right. Plus, there's something different about them. Piccolo says as he smiles and continues, Something tells me that this is going to get interesting. 
These damn gods made the worst mistake of underestimating these two. Dispo says they're lucky they appeared at the last moment. It's a shame that the luck is already going to end. Vegeta would laugh sarcastically on hearing this and say, Is it a pity? You should worry more about yourself than about us, you damn insects. Worry? Our universe will be the one who wins this time, says Dispo as he launches an attack on Vegeta. Vegeta disappears. Dispo says, where are you hiding, Universe 7 warrior? Vegeta says, I'm right behind you, fool. Vegeta kicks Dispo outside the arena. Toppo would be surprised and say, what's wrong? How did he defeat Dispo so easily? How dare you? Now I will bring you out of the sand in the name of justice. Vegeta says, sorry to say this, but now none of those in the arena are rivals to me are Kakarot. Toppo would be angered by Vegeta's words and say, stop behaving like a conceit. Now I will teach you the true power of justice. uses his maximum power, using the Hakai against Vegeta. Vegeta would scream in pain for the great Hakai of Toppo. Toppo would say, You're just a talker. My Hakai has caught you, and now you will be expelled from this arena. Vegeta starts laughing. <laughs> it was a joke. Your Hakai only tickles me all over my body. Vegeta disintegrates the power of the Hakai. Toppo says, what? How is this possible? Vegeta replies, I told you, you're no match for us two. Now we are on a completely different level. Toppo again attacks Vegeta. Vegeta disappears. This uses blue evolution. He creates great power in his hand by throwing it at Toppo. Vegeta, with his great power, attacks, destroys half of the platform, eliminating more than half of the participants. All the gods would be shocked. Even Beerus would begin to tremble at the sight of such power from Vegeta. All the warriors of Universe 2, 11, 10, 9, and 8 were eliminated by the fearsome power of Vegeta. Toppo had also been eliminated from the tournament. Goku would say, Vegeta, don't you think you went a little overboard? Vegeta said, do you think so? Zenosama would be very surprised and say, Wow, just look out. Over 50 warriors from the other universes with a single attacker gone. That warrior is very powerful. Daishinkan would realize the great power of the Saiyans. Vegeta would say, Kakarot, I've already warmed up enough. Let's start with a real battle. We've been preparing for a long time. Jiren would go down to where the Saiyans are. Goku would say, Don't be impatient, Vegeta. It's my turn to warm up a bit. Jiren says, I see that your friend has increased his power considerably. I imagine you weren't far behind. Goku just smiles. Daishinkan would tell Zenosama that he would have to eliminate all the losing universes to what Goku says, Little Zen, please don't delete any more universes. Could you do me that favor? Beerus says, Damn it! Don't tell the Great King what to do at all! Beerus would say very angrily. Vegeta would stare at Beerus and say, Beerus! And all the gods made a grave mistake. Champa would say, A serious mistake. What do you mean? Answer! Goku would stare at Beerus and say, First, have betrayed us. Vegeta would say, Second, killed Bulma and the other insect. Goku would say, Third, to have locked ourselves in the room of time. The third mistake will cost each of you your lives, having left us locked in a room where time passes much faster than on Earth. Gave us the power to make them dust. 
Goku says, and that's not all. We also have the power to stand up to the angels, who of course also turn their backs on us. Goku would say, staring at Whis, and Jiren would reply, I see that this has nothing to do with a tournament of power. It seems to be just personal problems. Jiren retreats from where Goku and Vegeta are. Goku would scream and say, Little Zen, I just came up with a great idea. It's a lot of fun. Zen Osama says, Seriously, what is it? Goku would say, How about the destroying gods confronting us? That would be much more fun, since the gods are very powerful beings. Zen Osama would say, It's a fantastic idea, but it's okay for you to face all the gods alone. That's a big disadvantage. Goku say, On the contrary, I'm more excited for this to begin. Zen Osama would say, Very well then, gods, you will face Goku and Vegeta from Universe 7. All the gods would be very angry. Quitella would say, I can't take this anymore. Damn! We must only put an end to you. The god Quitella launches to attack Vegeta. Vegeta with a strong kick. This part in two to the god Quitella opened a great silence in all the arena. Even Zen Osama had been shocked. Champa would say, I defeated Quitella in one fell swoop. How is that possible? Vegeta would say, Beerus comes down immediately, or would you prefer me to knock you down with one blow? Beerus would begin to tremble at Vegeta's great power. Whis would say, Mr. Beerus, seeing the situation, I recommend you to use this. Whis would say as he shows Beerus earrings. Beerus would say, this is, and he would smile evilly. Beerus would communicate telepathically with all the gods and say, Listen to me, gods. Seeing the current situation, we can't defeat those two fighting one-on-one. -on -one. We are with our backs against the wall. If we do not defeat it, the Supreme Priest will annihilate us. Remember that our goal is to exterminate Zenosama. That is why we will merge into one being, making our power increase considerably. All of you, join me. I will bear the burden of everything as the most powerful destroyer god. Vermont would say, Are you sure of this? If the gods unite, they will never be able to separate. Champa would say, We have to do it. We have to show these mortals the true terror that the destructive god can bring about. Beerus would say, Very well. I will face you. And Vegeta just smiles. Beerus goes down to the combat arena with all the gods. Beerus says, Very well. Show me how much progress you have progressed. I see that you have a kind of contempt against me, Vegeta. Vegeta says, Damn, you murdered Bulma, but you will pay for that with your life. Beerus says, That's right. Disrespect before a god can only be punished by death. Vegeta would get angry. He hits Beerus, causing him to hit the floor with his body. Vegeta says, Damn, I won't forgive you. Goku notices something weird. He says, Be careful, Vegeta. Seems there's a plan or something weird. Vegeta would also notice the mocking smile of the other gods. Champa would say, Seems to be that they have become very strong. Even my brother is no match for you. But it is a pity that luck fence ends so quickly. Champa and all the gods take out an earring. Goku and Vegeta would be watching. Piccolo would say, Don't tell me they're going to merge. The scream. Piccolo says, Goku, Vegeta, be careful. Those gods are planning to merge. Goku smiling would say, I know, Piccolo, don't worry. Beerus would say, they just had to stay in that room, but they had to cause an uproar. Now all that remains is for them to die. All the gods put the earrings on the left ear, while Beerus is the only one who puts it on the right ear. They merge. Zenosama says, A fusion of the destroyers! God, this is fantastic! Goku says, Are you sure you don't want me to help you? Vegeta says, I can't against them. I don't need your help. You take care of the masters of those gods. Beerus attacks Vegeta. Beerus hits Vegeta, causing him to crash into rubble. 
This would return him into his base form, and Beerus would say, Now you're no match for me. Your luck has just ended. Vegeta would say, ha, That my luck has just ended? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Don't think this is all my power. I will show you the great wall that you will not be able to overcome, no matter how much effort it is. Vegeta teaches us the transformation of Ultra Instinct. Beerus would be very surprised. Jiren would be shocked to see Vegeta's new power. Goku would say, You don't think it's very soon, Vegeta? Vegeta would say, The faster we finish, the better. Beerus would say, What is this great pressure? How did you achieve that transformation? Vegeta would reply, I've already told you. Your biggest mistake was underestimating the Saiyans. Kiev would say, my master is now very powerful. Kiev would say very excitedly. Vegeta would reply, this transformation can cope with the Ultra Instinct of Kakarot. Whis would stare at Vegeta and say, father. The Daishinkan would say, that's right. That's not the Ultra Instinct. It's something more complex. Something that took them to another level. Mr. Vegeta's blue transformation could wipe out a destroyer god. I can't imagine how much power he has with this new transformation. Zenosama would say, Vegeta is awesome. I even feel that power is greater than yours, Daishinkan. Daishinkan would be very enraged. This one in his mind would say, This damn monkey. How did he get such power? Damn, I think I'll have to act fast. Vegeta replies, I'll get rid of this quickly. <laughs> Suddenly Whis and the other gods appear in front of Vegeta. Whis like Beerus uses the earrings to merge with the other angels. All these form a single being with a power ten times greater than that of Beerus. Now the real battle has just begun. I can observe that his powers have increased to an overwhelming way. Before with the transformation of the blue, they could face a destruction god. However, now with that same transformation, they easily surpass them all. That means the real fight is about to begin. The fusion of the destruction gods and the fusion of all the angels against you. Goku gets in front and says, You have said, it is the real fight that's about to begin. Goku uses the perfect Ultra Instinct and says, Vegeta, I'll take care of the fusion of Whis. You take care of Beerus. A big fight will be very close to starting, but suddenly, something happens that neither Goku nor Vegeta would expect. Jiren would be very surprised as well as Topo and the other warriors of the Tournament of Power. But the one who was most terrified was Zenosama himself. For Daishinkan had murdered his guardians in front of Zenosama's face. Zenosama with a terrifying face would ask the Daishinkan, What are you up to? Why did you do this? The Daishinkan would say, Why? All this was planned from the beginning. The gods and angels are already tired of following orders from you. And that includes me. Obeying a stupid child like you is overwhelming. So now I will be the new king of the whole. I deserve that position more than you. Zenosama would be terrified. Daishinkan would continue. I love your scary face. No matter how powerful you are, you can't stop being a child. My only chance was if it made you feel scared. A feeling you've never felt before. And that would take your powers of destruction and fade them away for a few moments. So I could do this. Daishinkan cuts off Zenosama's heads by killing them both instantly. Goku screams, Little Zens! The Daishinkan begins to behave very strangely. This one would start screaming. Goku would be shocked. 
Beerus and Wiss would just smile. Beerus would say, at last, we're free. Vegeta would reply, what's going on? Beerus would say, they say that whoever assassinates Zenosama gets all his power. That is why Zenosama was always protected by his bodyguards. But now the new king of the whole is going through a transformation. Whis would reply, that's right. My father has become the new king of the whole. He will be invincible. Vegeta and Goku feel a great power, much greater than theirs. The Daishinkan would say, At last, all this power is mine. Vegeta would say, This is getting interesting. That dam absorbed the two Zenosamas. Now their power surpasses ours completely. Destroyer, gods, angels, unite with me and let us form an invincible being with infinite powers. Goku would say, Vegeta, we can't allow that. If those three merge, it could be an end. Let's end the gods and angels. Vegeta would reply. That's true. Let's hurry, Kakarot. Goku would launch himself to attack Whis like Vegeta against Beerus. A great clash of powers would take place. All universes would tremble from the great shocks of blows. All the warriors in the Tournament of Power did not believe everything that was happening. Jiren would say, Goku's Ultra Instinct is ten times more powerful than when he fought with me. How is that possible? How could he get so much power in such short time? To achieve such power, it would take years of training. Vegeta hits Beerus hard, leaving him badly injured. Goku and Whis would continue in combat. Vegeta would say, Beerus, have you ever heard the expression, tooth for tooth, an eye for an eye? Damn, you will pay with your life for murdering Bulma. Beerus replied, Vegeta, how have you become so strong? By training. I'm sure when they locked us up in that room, they somehow modified it so that Kakarot and I couldn't get out. Then we understood that in order to leave that place, we had to overcome its powers and destroy the gods and nothing more than pathetic lazy people, said Vegeta as he carries a powerful attack in his hand. Damn, now you die. He throws his power against Beerus with the intention of assassinating him. But suddenly the Daishinkan appears deflecting the attack. He kicks Vegeta doing some damage to him. Beerus says, Supreme Priest? Daishinkan replies, Never call me that again. Remember that I am the new king of the whole universe. Beerus would get nervous. Goku would say, Vegeta! Goku hits Whis hard by teleporting to where Vegeta is. Goku says, Is Vegeta okay? Vegeta would reply, That's right. I'm just taken by surprise. Although I must admit that was a big blow. Goku would say, what's going on here? Why did you suddenly murder the Zenosamas? Answer! The Daishinkan looks seriously at Goku, saying, Very soon, a great war will begin that will explode the four multiverses. Vegeta says, multiverses? What do you mean? Daishinkan would say, you Saiyans will be a big problem, which is why you must be eliminated. Goku replies, a big deal? What do you mean? We have not done anything wrong. Daishinkan would say, not just yet, but very soon they will. That is why they must die here and now. Vegeta would say, why did you murder and steal the power of the two insects? Whis replies, you mortals are not interested in that. To which Daishinkan would begin to laugh. The Daishinkan would say, as I said, the great power is best in my hands. Zenosama was a child with the ability to disappear universes and any living thing he wanted. But it cannot eliminate more powerful beings like the beings of the other multiverses. Now that I have absolute power, I am able to do this. Daishinkan raises his hand. This disappears all the warriors who are just still in the combat area. Goku would say, what just happened? Daishinkan would reply, it's not obvious. I just sent them all to hell. I can even do this. And Daishinkan with the power of the Zenosamas eliminates universes 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
I just deleted four universes, said the Daishinkan. My power goes beyond any limits. Daishinkan in his mind would say, I still don't understand why the dragon told me that these two Saiyans would become direct enemies of all the deities. Thanks to the dragon of the sphere, I could know that killing Zenosama could make me of his power. And it was true. I imagine that it must be true what he also said before these Saiyans. A few days before. Daishinkan gathered the dragon's super spears scattered throughout the universe. He planned to take the position from Zenosama, but for this, he had to go with the great dragon. Dragon, tell me what is Zenosama's weakness, said Daishinkan. The dragon replied, Zenosama is very powerful, but he is still a child. And if you make him feel a strong feeling such as terror, he would become vulnerable to any attack for a few seconds. Daishinkan would say, I see. So there was a way, at last, I will be able to take over all the universes. The dragon would say, Do you know what will happen after killing Zenosama? Daishinkan said, I don't know. I'm not interested either. I just want to be the new king of all. Dragon would say, However, whoever kills Zenosama will get all his great power. If you were to kill Zenosama, the multiverse is to start a war. Eliminating Zenosama means the complete imbalance of the whole. If a king would be eliminated altogether, the kings of the other multiverses will not be left without doing anything. The Daishinkan would say, that doesn't matter. What I'll surpass them all? Dragon would reply, you are a damn traitor. Do you think I will let you escape from here knowing what you want to do? I would never have given you that information. I never thought that such a noble being who has served the king at all for a long time would think of revealing himself. Daishinkan would say, Won't you let me go? What do you mean by that? Do you insinuate that you could defeat me? The dragon would say, I don't have enough power to stand up to you. But the dragon makes his eyes shine brightly, and Daishinkan says, What have you done? Let me tell you that there are two warriors, two Saiyans who will shake all the multiverses just to stop you. You even know one very well, said the dragon. Daishinkan reply and saw it in his mouth. Daishinkan slays the dragon with his great power. With his last word, the dragon would say, we will see each other very soon again. Gohan will be training with Piccolo to prepare for the tournament of power. Suddenly Piccolo falls to the ground. It begins to feel weird. Gohan would say, is there anything wrong with Mr. Piccolo? Piccolo would say, carelessness. Nothing, just, I feel something strange. But nothing happened anymore. Let's continue training. Now currently. Goku would say, wait, damn, don't destroy anymore. Daishinkan would say, don't order me what to do, you nasty Saiyan. Gohan from Universe 7 is your son, isn't it? Goku would reply, What do you intend to do? The Daishinkan would say, Say goodbye to him. But just before the Daishinkan tries to eliminate Gohan, he receives a blow from Goku and Vegeta. Goku screams, Damn, we won't let you keep destroying whatever you want. Daishinkan would reply, I didn't want to end this quickly, but I'll still have to kill them. The Daishinkan tries to kill Goku and Vegeta with the power of Zenosama, but nothing happens to them. Daishinkan replies, what's going on? Why don't they disappear? Vegeta would say, I understand that you are a very powerful being. At that time, when Whis said you were his father, I couldn't imagine attaining your powers. But what do you think? I once told them I will repeat them to you again. Don't underestimate the sayings. Goku would say, I never imagined that a person like you would be behind all this. We are forced to use this to end all of you. Piccolo would say, what do you mean? Goku, don't tell me that's not all your power. Gohan would reply, so Mr. Vegeta and my father have not yet shown their true potential. Goku would say, Vegeta, we train a lot to be able to use this transformation. However, I know Kakarot, we must not lose control, said Vegeta. Goku smiles and says, Daishinkan, we will finish with you.
Goku and Vegeta use a strange transformation. This power was unimaginable. However, Goku and Vegeta behaved in a very strange way, as if they were not them. They had the behavior of beasts. They quickly attack Daishinken. Goku hits Daishinken hard by sending him to fly, while Vegeta would be waiting for him with great power. This one throws it, causing a big explosion. Beerus would be very nervous. Even Whis would be shocked and say, I never imagined that Goku and Vegeta would get to that point. Piccolo couldn't believe what his eyes are seeing. Gohan would ask, This is real? It's really Mr. Vegeta and my father? Jiren, like the other warriors, wouldn't know what else to expect. They were terrified to see everything that was happening in front of them. The Daishinkan would be very hurt. He received several blows from Vegeta. Daishinkan returns to his real form. Whis would say, Father, Beerus would be trembling with fear. He had repented for the betrayal they had committed to the Saiyans. Daishinkan would get up very badly injured. The Daishinkan would say, Who are watching me? Join me! Beerus takes the earring as does Whis to merge with the Daishinkan. But these are attacked by Goku and Vegeta. Beerus would say, Are you Vegeta? Let's talk about this. I didn't want to kill Boma. They were just orders. Vegeta wouldn't say a single word. This, with a powerful attack, turns Beerus into dust. Whis would plead for his life and say, Son Goku, I only followed orders from the destroyer gods. Goku grabs Whis by voting him into the air, and with a powerful Kamehameha, he turns him into dust. The Daishinkan would stand up and say, Damn, who are you? They're like beasts. They can't be the same Son Goku and Vegeta from Universe 7. Goku and Vegeta without thinking anything else to kill Daishinkan. But someone else appears in front of them, stopping their blows with great ease. A very muscular stranger being appears in front of Goku and Vegeta, protecting Daishinkan. This one would just laugh. You are pitiful, Daishinkan. Do you already have what we need? The Daishinkan would say. That's right. But what are you doing here? I was watching you. You should thank me. Angry Daishinkan would order the strange subject and say, Kill those Saiyans. They're a nuisance. The stranger being would look angrily at Daishinkan and say, Did I just hear correctly? Did you just give me an order? This one grabs Daishinkan by the neck and says, I don't want it to happen again. You hear me? A scumbag who is easily defeated by those monkeys can't tell me what I have to do. The Daishinkan faints, for this stranger had suffocated him. Curse! Just fainting! How useless! However, I need it. I see that you're strong. Excuse me, well, I am Boria, the king of the whole of another multiverse. Very soon, we will see each other again. He disappears, taking the Daishinkan. Goku and Vegeta return to their base state. They would be very tired. The two would fall to the ground. No warrior moved a single centimeter. Everyone had been petrified to see such a scene. After Goku and Vegeta will use one of their most powerful transformations, they fall to the floor tired. Piccolo Gohan would immediately approach. Everyone else would be watching from the stands. Piccolo would say, Hey Goku, what happened? What was that all about? Gohan would say, Father, are you okay? Are you okay, Mr. Vegeta? Goku would reply, That's right. Quiet, we're fine. Vegeta said, Damn. We trained so much for this transformation, and we can only be transformed for a few minutes. Goku would say, if it is very exhausting, but compared to the beginning, we have progressed so much. Piccolo would say, compared to the beginning? Tell me, what happened inside the time room? Goku said, we've been in there for too long. 
Vegeta would say, to be a little more exact, we were locked up for millions of years. Piccolo and Gohan would be surprised. Piccolo would say that's impossible. They would already be dead. Goku said that's right. Thanks to Mr. Popo, we're still alive. Gohan said thanks to Mr. Popo? Goku said that's right. Mr. Popo asked the dragon of our planet to make us immortal. Vegeta said thanks to that, Kakarot and I have evolved. Gohan said, I see. It's surprising. Goku would reply, that's right. A lot has happened. Goku would then tell in detail to Gohan and Piccolo. Vegeta would say, we have finished with Beerus and all of the gods has happened. Piccolo would say, we were all taken by surprise by the betrayal of Zeno-sama's right hand. Goku would say, that's right. I didn't expect it at all. But when we tried to defeat Daishinkan, the guy who was protecting, it stopped our blows as if nothing happened. Vegeta would say, it's true. He said something about the multiverses and about him being a king at all. He has to be a very powerful guy. Goku would say that Daishinkan said that there are beings more powerful than Zenosama. I imagine it must be that kind of subject. If I remember his name is Boria and said that very soon we will be seeing you. He asked me, what did he mean by that? Vegeta said, not obvious. We will have to be prepared. Goku just smiled. Goku said, we will have to become stronger. Suddenly, something strange happens with Piccolo. Gohan says, Mr. Piccolo. Piccolo falls to the floor. Goku says, Piccolo, you're fine? Piccolo stands up. Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan begin to feel enormous power within Piccolo. Gohan says, who are you? And the dragon replies, I just witnessed everything that happened. I am the dragon of the super spheres. Goku and the others are surprised. Vegeta says, what do you do in the body of that insect, a piccolo? Also, how can you contact us? I thought you could only hear the language of the gods. The dragon said, I can communicate with any living being, but my duty was only to attend to the desires of the great deities of this multiverse. Vegeta said, how you got to piccolo's body? Dragon said, Daishinkan came to me for information about Zenosama. I never thought he would reveal himself this way. Before Daishinkan murdered me for wanting to stop me, teleported my soul to this Nemeku. Vegeta said, I see. You used a random body to save yourself. The dragon said, A random body? Wrong. This Nemekian has great hidden power. I even delayed in taking control of his body. I could see everything that happened. Wanted to help stop Zenosama's murder, but Piccolo's body was not easy to control. Vegeta said, Are you telling me that this insect has a great hidden power, that even the super dragon of the spheres has difficult controlling? And the dragon says, That's right. Although my other body would not have supported my power, and would have exploded, somehow, I and this Nemeku are compatible. Vegeta says, I see. Then you could explain what's really going on here. The dragon says, That's right. I will tell you everything. Vegeta says, We are listening to you. The dragon says, There are four multiverses right now. We are in multiverse one. Goku says, Multiverse one. And the dragon replies, Each multiverse is ruled by a king of everything. In multiverse one, King Zenosama ruled. In multiverse two, King Archon rules. Multiverse three has Princess Nian. And multiverse four, King Boria rules. Gohan says, how scary all that sounds. Goku says, how interesting all that sounds. Tell me, dragon, which is the most powerful king? The dragon says, they are all very powerful, but the king of universe two and four are simply the scariest. They are masters of combat. To put it this way, they are almost invincible. All possess a very destructive power worthy of kings of everything. Although I must admit that Zenosama is the weakest of the three because of his ignorance of combat. Vegeta says Daishinkan murdered and stole the power of Zenosama and that King Boria took him with him. Something tells me that terrible things will happen. The dragon says, As you say it, apparently King Boria will start a war in the multiverses. Gohan says, A war? What does that mean? The dragon says, Previously, King Boria started a war against all the multiverses. That war took away part of this multiverse. Universe 6 of Multiverse 1 were erased by war. Vegeta says, If I remember correctly, we said that those universes were erased by Zenosama. The dragon says, Although it is true that Zenosama had the ability to erase universes at will, the story that he erased the six universes is a complete lie. Everything was the product of a great war. 
After what happened, Zenosama made everyone promise not to talk about it, even to me. But that doesn't matter now, and that's not all. That war took the life of the Queen of Multiverse 3, leaving her daughter Princess Nian in command. However, I will have information that Universe 3 happened to be ruled by the King of Multiverse 2. If that is true, everything would make sense. Now the King of Multiverse 1 and the Queen of Multiverse 3 were killed, and the Queen's daughter is no longer in charge. I will take the biggest fight in history. The King of Multiverse 2 against the King of Multiverse 4. For control, we must do something. Piccolo makes his eyes glow red, teleporting everyone in a rare place. Jiren says, Disappeared? What will be going on? Toppo replies, Jiren, we have to leave here. All the warriors of the surviving universe has disappeared. Goku says, Where are we? Dragon says, This is Multiverse 3. Find Princess Nian. Tell her everything. She will be of great help. Just be careful. Beings in the body of the Namekian exhaust me a lot. We will see you later. The dragon disappeared and appeared Piccolo. Gohan says, Mr. Piccolo, is it okay? Mr. Piccolo says, I just have a little headache, but I know it's happening. I could hear the dragon of the super spheres that is in my body talking to you. Vegeta says, then Kakarot, what will you do? Goku with a clenched fist looking at the sky. This one would say, what we always do, Vegeta. Keep fighting and pushing boundaries. I want to face them. I want to face the king of the other multiverses. And of course, I want to protect our multiverse from Boria's hand. Vegeta would just smile and say, I will follow you, Kakarot. I also want to know how far I can go. A Saiyan over time can evolve and become more powerful, but face more powerful warriors? That will raise us to a level faster. Goku says, Piccolo, Gohan, what are you going to do? Piccolo says, I will follow you. Something tells me that they will need this dragon that is inside me, and of course I also want to discover that new power of which the dragon inside me speaks. Gohan says, Father, I would like to follow you, but I will only be a burden to you. My powers are not great enough to help them. Goku says, Don't say that, son. Remember that you are capable of everything if you set your mind to it. You have not yet realized your true potential. Besides, you are already here. Gohan says it's true. I will go, father. I promise not to give you trouble. Goku says very well. It's already decided. Then let's go for the princess. What was his name? Vegeta said, Nian, you insect. Goku replies, we will look for Princess Nian. Gohan replies, but how will we find it? Vegeta says, I imagine that in this universe there are strong insects like the angels and gods of our multiverse. We will just have to raise our power. Goku says, very well. Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Gohan raise their powers. <laughs> Suddenly a being appears in the place. Goku says, great work. This slowly appears where Vegeta is. Who are you? Are they warrior commanded by Archon? Vegeta says no. We've come to see a certain Nian. You're not welcome. Get out of here. Goku says hold on, hold on. We have not come to harm anyone. The dragon of the super spheres brought us here. Goku says with a very serious way. Zeno-sama was killed and everything points to the fact that it was done by the king of multiverse 4. I mean Boria. The dragon told us that a war between the most powerful beings of the existing would be very close to occurring. He told us to find Nian. Maybe she can help us. Cannon would show a worried face. My princess doesn't fight anymore. She lives hidden in the shadows of this multiverse. Vegeta says, then the dragon's information was correct. The princess is no longer in charge of this multiverse. Answer me this question. This multiverse was conquered by the king of multiverse 2, Archon. Cannon would put on a very serious face and say, It seems that they are telling the truth. My name is Cannon. I am a knight of the kingdom. This multiverse was effectively attacked and dominated by Archon. That damn fellow broke my princess's fighting spirit by killing everything she loved. Assume Madra, to my companions, and to all the inhabitants, it is only she and I who are hiding in the shadows. Goku would say, Cannon, please take us to her. Cannon would say, all right. I'll take them on one condition only, 
If they are really commanded by the same dragon of the super spheres, it means that they must be very strong. If one of you defeats me, I promise that I will take you with me. But if not, I will kill you all myself. If you tell the truth, and really the dragon god commands you, you must be powerful, and you must not say no. I do not feel any powerful presence in you, so what do you say? Goku says, very well, seems good to me. I will face you. Vegeta says, wait Kakarot, I will do it. Gohan says, father, Mr. Vegeta, please let me do it. I want to see how far I can go. Goku says, let's leave this job to Gohan. Vegeta would look seriously at Gohan. Vegeta would say, do what you want, but remember Gohan that this fight depends on whether we can see that princess or not. Gohan says, thank you very much. I promise not to disappoint you. Gohan walks around Cannon. Gohan says, I will be your opponent. Cannon says, that's fine with me. Let me tell you that my power is similar to the power of the princess of this multiverse. So I will fight with everything. Gohan says, yes, I will also fight with all my power. After Goku and the others teleport to Multiverse 3 thanks to the power of the dragon of the super spheres that inhabit the body of Piccolo, these would be in search of Neon, daughter of the Queen of All from Multiverse 3. They meet a subject named Cannon. Cannon would take them with her only if one of the Saiyans defeats him. Cannon would fight with Gohan. An interesting fight would be about to begin. Vegeta would say, You heard Kakarot? That guy claimed to be as powerful as the princess here. I don't know how powerful that princess is, but if he is at the level of a destroyer god or an angel, Gohan will have no chance. Do you seriously want Gohan to fight him? Piccolo would say, the Saiyans should not be underestimated. That's what you always say, Vegeta. Since the Tournament of Power, Gohan has dedicated himself to serious training. When this last Tournament of Strength took place and you were not there, Gohan knew he would have to become much stronger, and he did. Though it is not at the level of a destructive god or an angel, he should not be underestimated. Remember that he's also a Saiyan, Vegeta, and he only turns his gaze. Cannon says, show me your true strength. Gohan says, very well, I will give you all in this fight. Gohan uses his mystical form. Gohan says, I'm ready. Gohan sets out to attack Cannon. Great flashes of power cause the clouds to disperse. Cannon says, not bad, but with that you will not defeat me. Gohan attacks Cannon again. Cannon effortlessly dodges all the blows. Gohan says, what's going on? It seems that he dodged my punches before he threw them. Cannon said, that's all? Vegeta said, I told you, Kakarot. Goku says, wait, Vegeta, let's observe a little more. Cannon hits Gohan hard, doing him great damage. Cannon punches Gohan in the face again and again until he has had enough. Piccolo says, Gohan, get up. Don't let it beat you that way. Vegeta says, damn, we have to see that Neon anyway. Gohan won't be able to cope with that guy. Gohan is not like us. He was not born to be a warrior. Accepted Gohan, just a simple college student who left for fights. Goku would be somewhat nervous. Cannon kept beating Gohan. Piccolo would yell at Vegeta. Shut your mouth, Vegeta. And Vegeta would reply, what did you say? Piccolo would say, Goku, you and I were rivals to the destroying gods or the angels who accompanied him before they were locked in that room of time. Thanks to Mr. Popo, they became immortal. That is why they evolved their power in an absurd way. You don't have to be so conceited. Let Gohan take care of the rest. Vegeta would reply, Insect, you are not seeing how they beat Gohan. In addition, the only thing that would interest us is to join forces with the one Neon to defeat the other kings of all. I remember what our goal is. Piccolo ignored to Vegeta. Vegeta starts to get angry. He would just keep watching the fight. Cannon stops hitting Gohan. Cannon says, this guy has already been defeated. I can feel that you two are much stronger. Cannon would say, referring to Goku and Vegeta. Cannon would say, why did you send this weakling to fight me? Vegeta would say, how about fighting with me? 
It will only be a change. Gohan, you defeated, left the fights a long time ago. And that's why he's just a weakling. I promise that I will be a good combat rival. Piccolo laughs and says, I already told you. Don't underestimate a Saiyan. Gohan had not been defeated. Haven't you noticed? His key is not decreased. Gohan would stand up. Gohan with great wounds with a broken voice would say, You haven't defeated me. Cannon returns to see Gohan. Cannon sets out to continue attacking Gohan. Hits it, sending it crashing into several mountains. Goku would scream, Gohan! Piccolo would say, Wait, Goku, trust your child. Goku would say, But Piccolo, at this stage, Gohan will die! Vegeta would say, That's what I was trying to say at the beginning. Piccolo would say, Do you want to trample on Gohan's pride? If he said to take care of it, he would, and he will. Goku would nervously watch the fight. Cannon would keep beating Gohan over and over again. Cannon would say, Give up once and for all if you don't want to die. Gohan would continue to stand up and say, I can't do that. Cannon would start to get angry, raising his key. He would continue to attack Gohan with much stronger blows. Goku would scream, Damn! I can't see this anymore! Goku flies to where Cannon is to attack him. This would throw a blow to Cannon's face, but that coup was stopped by Gohan. Gohan would say, What did you do, father? This is my fight. Please let me keep fighting. I promise you I wouldn't be a hindrance. Let me keep fighting. Goku would be very surprised to hear Gohan. Goku would say, Gohan? I understand you. I'm very sorry to have intervened. I trust you, Gohan. Show Cannon what you're capable of. Cannon would say, Ha! Huh, so you're a proud warrior, huh? Gohan would say, Proud? <laughs> I just try to keep my word. I said I would defeat you, and I will. Cannon would say, Then do it in one go, and stop receiving my blows as if you were a sandbag. Piccolo would approach Goku. Piccolo would say, Gohan never stopped training. Trust your child. Goku would reply, I will trust him. Why do I feel like you're hiding something from me, Piccolo? Piccolo would just smile and say, When they locked you in that room of time and warned us about the tournament of force, Gohan and I trained very hard. In a confrontation, Gohan showed me great power. But after he showed it to me, he fainted. In the power tournament, he could not use it. I think this is a good opportunity for Gohan to teach us his true powers. Cannon keeps beating Gohan. Gohan can't follow Cannon's high speed. Cannon kicks Gohan, causing him to bounce off the ground. Cannon says, I must admit that you are very persistent. Gohan would be about to faint. Vegeta would say, Gohan, remember the promise you made to us. If you're going to lose in that humiliating way, do not promise things you cannot fulfill. Think of your wife and your daughter. If we don't see that Princess Nian, the Earth and the entire multiverse will be in danger. And with it, our families. You can't afford to stay there lying down. Gohan would think of his wife, daughter, his mother, and Goten. Gohan would scream, I'm not going to lose! Cannon would say, Damn, die at once and stop getting up. Cannon approaches Gohan at high speed, trying to hit him. But Gohan stops the blow with one hand. Gohan would say, I promise not to be a hindrance. I promised I would defeat you. I can't afford to lose. Suddenly, you begin to feel a tense aura. The clouds would disintegrate almost immediately. Gohan undergoes a transformation. Vegeta would just smile. Piccolo would say, Vegeta, your words were of great help. That's the transformation Goku tells you about. Vegeta only ignores Piccolo. 
Goku would smile. Goku would say, My son is fantastic. That power far surpasses the power of the blue. It's amazing. How could Gohan get something like that? I imagine that you have a lot to see, or I'm wrong, Piccolo. Piccolo would say, Shut up and watch the combat. Goku would say, Come on, Gohan. You can do it. Cannon would smile. Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo would be surprised. Cannon would have used the Ultra Instinct. Vegeta would say, that guy can use the Ultra Instinct. Cannon would say, you surprised me. You exceeded your limits and managed to use that transformation. But as I said before, my power is similar to Princess Nian. Now that you will have to fight with all your power, I'll do it too. Prepare. Goku would say, we can't let Gohan fight that guy. It is true that your new transformation is very powerful, but the Ultra Instinct of that guy is much more so. Cannon and Gohan would be about to use their maximum powers in combat. Cannon would launch a full speed attack at Gohan, but someone stops him. Vegeta says, she wouldn't be. And Neon introduces herself and says, Cannon, calm down, what's going on? Cannon would reply, Princess, what is she doing here? Neon would look at the situation and say, I see you have made Cannon use its maximum power. I could feel two big presences. I was worried, and that's why I came. Neon notices something weird in Gohan. Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and the Cannon itself would be surprised. Cannon would say, He is an admirable warrior. You deserve all my respect. Gohan, even though he has reached a new transformation with new powers, he has already become unconscious. Gohan levitated in the air unconscious. Neon gives Gohan a little push with one finger. He falls to the ground in its base form. Goku says, Gohan. Neon says, Cannon, I've never seen you so excited. I could even say that you enjoyed this fight. Cannon would reply, This is Princess. At first I thought I was fighting with a weakling, but now that I see this guy push his limits that way, I can only say that it was a great fight, although I have not been defeated. Princess Neon is in front of you. Vegeta says, So you are Neon. Neon says, Who's looking for me? Vegeta replies, We are from Multiverse 1. All of us who are here come from Universe 7. Neon would be surprised and say, Hold on, are you telling me that you come from Zenosama? How is he? I've missed him very much. Vegeta would say, That's right. Zenosama was the king of everything in Multiverse 1. Neon would say, What do you mean by was? Vegeta would say, Zenosama was killed, and everything points to the plans of the king of everything in Multiverse 4. I mean a certain Boria. Nian would be left without saying a single word. Nian would say, How is that possible? Vegeta would reply, It's the truth. Nian would say, Tell me how they got here and why they were looking for me. Goku would say, Wake up, Gohan. Piccolo would say, Apparently this unconscious was serious injuries. We have to let him rest. Nian notary something rare in Piccolo. Nian would approach Piccolo and say, Are you the dragon of the super spheres of Multiverse 1? Piccolo would reply, I'm just a Namekian. My name is Piccolo. I imagine you are Neon of that dragon you refer to apparently manages to inhibit my body's insides. Neon would say, I see. That explains how they got here. Apparently they're not bad people. I will take you to my hiding place. There I have medicine that will surely help the boy recover faster. Goku says, thank you very much. That would be a great help. Cannon would say, you called that Gohan's son. Let me tell you that he's a great warrior. Goku would say, you are too. Thanks to you, Gohan was able to break his limits again. Cannon would say, I imagine you are as strong as he is. I would like to fight with you and see the kind of warriors that Multiverse 1 has. Nian would say, Cannon, don't even think about it. You're no match for that guy. Cannon would say, what? Why would you say that? Nian would say, I can tell. Then accompany me. Goku would say, Cannon, I would like to face you. Apparently, you are also a Saiyan like us. Cannon would say, you are Saiyans? Goku would reply, that's right. But for the time being, I just want Gohan to recover. Cannon would say, of course, I understand. Nian would say, let's get it over with. I want you to explain to me something. What is really going on? Vegeta would say, then let's not waste time and take us to your hideout. Goku and the others disappear. 
They appear in a large cave. Goku says, Here you live, Nian? Nian would say, Cannon, please take that guy and give him his medicine. Cannon would say, It is okay, I will help you. Nian would say, Hold on, the boy will be fine. Cannon is a good doctor. Tell me, what is your name? I am Goku, said Goku. Nian would reply, Who is the other who accompanies him? Goku would say, He is Vegeta. Nian would say, before continuing with the questions, Goku, Vegeta, teach me your true powers. I can feel that you are very powerful, and I want to see how powerful you are. After Gohan's great fight against Kanan, appears Nian, the heiress of Multiverse 3. Nian would order Kanan to treat Gohan's wounds, just as he would ask Goku and Vegeta to teach him his true powers. Vegeta would say, are you testing us? What do you plan to do next? Nian would say, Zenosama was killed by Boria, the king of everything in Multiverse 4. My multiverse was conquered by Multiverse King 2 Archon, which means that very soon he will open a great war where the most powerful kings of Multiverse 2 and 4 will face off to gain absolute dominance of the multiverses. If they are here, it is because you want to avoid all that. Dian more seriously would say, Show me your powers. The warriors of Multiverse 1, if you want me to help you, show me that I can trust you in your strength. Those outside will not feel its powers. This place is protected, so do not worry. Goku. Very well, we will show you. Vegeta. Vegeta would smile. Goku and Vegeta use Ultra Instinct. Ganon feels the big key. Immediately, he goes out to see the power of Goku and Vegeta. Neon would also be somewhat surprised and say, It's admirable. Even if they only use the Ultra Instinct, its power goes beyond. Cannon would say, I don't understand. That guy is still using the Ultra Instinct just like me. Why does his power go beyond mine? And also the other subject dominates the Omega Instinct. The same transformation of my princess. How surprising. Nian would say, they have amazing powers. The warriors of Universe 1 have surprised me. Goku would say, hold on, hold on. We have yet shown you our true power. Cannon would say, what do you mean by that? They have not yet shown their true power? Vegeta would say, shut up and watch. Nian would be very confused. Goku would say, we were betrayed and locked up by the gods. This power can only be endured for 20 minutes. This is the result of a lot of training. Goku and Vegeta would shake the whole place. From one moment to the next, the sky got dark. Nian would scream, what is that kind of power? Goku and Vegeta immediately return to their base form. Ganon would have no words, was so surprised to see two Saiyans easily surpass Princess Nian's power. Vegeta would say, we have already shown you our power. Now tell us everything and tell us how you will help us. Nian would say, first of all, tell me, how did they get that power? Vegeta would say, never underestimate a Saiyan. I've always said it, and all the deities underestimated us by locking us in a room. They believed that this way they would kill us without Zenosama noticing. But we were out and made them pay. Goku would say, hold on, Vegeta. Don't say it like that. You make us look like the bad guys. Nian would say, do you try to say that you murdered the gods of that multiverse? Vegeta would say, that's right. Goku would say, it's true. We put an end to the gods and angels of our multiverse. They betrayed us and locked us up and murdered one of our friends, just like Vegeta's wife. Vegeta angrily would say, Damn, garbage! They are believed that they are because they are gods, they can do whatever they want. Whoever messes with me will pay dearly. That is why we will stop that such boria. Apparently everything was that clown's plan. Nian would say, I'm sorry, but I can't trust you. You killed the gods and angels of your multiverse. You could be a threat. Goku would say, we are no threat. They betrayed us. Nian would say, they will leave when you boys regain consciousness. Although the dragon of the super spheres brought it in this place. Mere mortals who murder deities for a foolish desire like revenge are simply sinners. Gohan would wake up. 
Gohan would say, Down. I didn't do my part. I lost consciousness in the middle of the fight. Gohan heads to where everyone is. Goku would say, Gohan, are you all right? Gohan would say, So, father, I feel good, but I'm sorry I couldn't defeat him. Goku would say, Son, you did very well. You exceeded my expectations. Ganon is very powerful. I knew from the beginning. I wanted to see you break your limits and you made it. Gohan would say, Thanks, father. I will continue to train and become much stronger. Gohan would scream, Can and I will continue to trade and next time you face me, I will surpass you. Cannon would smile and say, I'll be waiting for you, Multiverse Warrior One. Neon would say, Very well, your child has already woken up. As I said before, now they have to go. Gohan would say, What? But why? Cannon would say, Princess, they have the same goal as us. The best thing would be to ally with them. Neon would say, Cannon, do not question my orders. Cannon would feel very doubtful. Vegeta would say, Kakarot, we'll manage. We only came here because that dragon that lives in Piccolo's body wanted us to join them. If they don't want to help us, let's get the hell out of here. Goku would seriously say, You're right. Gohan, Piccolo, we will leave. Cannon would say, Princess, he's going to let them go? They are the people we have been waiting for a long time. Nian would say, A murderer of gods is a sinner. We cannot ally with people like that. Cannon would say, Princess, they had their reasons. Do you want to go on living like this? This multiverse was conquered by the king of multiverse too. Since then, we have lived hidden from the world. We have to do something. Nian would say, Cannon, close your mouth. I have said that we will continue to wait. Cannon would start to get angry. The angel would say, Warriors of Multiverse One, please let me go with you. Nian would say, What did you just say, Cannon? Goku would look seriously at Cannon, and he would say, I will help you with whatever I can, and will fight winged for you. Vegeta would say, Interesting. You are also very strong. You could be of great help. Goku would say, Very good. If we are about to intervene in a war, it will be better to have some strong allies. Nian would say, Cannon, how dare you? You were with me always. You never disobeyed an order from me. What's wrong? Cannon would say, Even if you are the princess of this multiverse, the truth is that now you're just a coward. Sinners? What nonsense is that? Perhaps you forgot that Archon's subordinate gods killed our entire family and are now looking for us to exterminate us. If you don't want to do anything about it, that's fine with me. But I will not miss this opportunity. They are very powerful. I'm sure that with the help of those warriors, I will be able to recover this multiverse and avenge my people. Cannon goes to where Goku and Vegeta are. Cannon says, I will help you with everything I can. Once we leave this place, we will be wanted by Archon subordinates. As they heard before, this multiverse was ruled and is infested by warriors of the multiverse too. We have to be careful. Vegeta would say, I understand. Then let's fence at once. Neon would be left thinking about Cannon's words and say, Curse! Cannon doesn't make rash choices. Think about it even a little. Cannon would say, I have nothing to think about, Princess. Excuse me, but these words, you should be embarrassed to keep hiding. Neon would be struck by those words by Cannon. Since he has been her shoulder at all times, after Multiverse 3 lost the war and its queen, Cannon was always protecting the queen's daughter. But right now, the most important thing for Cannon is to take back his home and take revenge on King Archon. <laughs> Neon would say something serious. If you want to die, go ahead. I won't stop you. Cannon turns back to Neon. Goku says, very well, Cannon. Tell me, what do we have to do? Cannon says, first, we have to go to the great castle where the queen of this multiverse lived. Vegeta would say, why will we go to that place? Cannon would say, we will look for a staff that will allow us to travel from multiverse to multiverse. Vegeta would say, but the dragon that dwells in Piccolo brought us here so we will be able to teleport to the other universes. Piccolo said, that's impossible. Apparently this dragon exhausted all his energies to bring us here. I don't think he'll wake up again when we need him. He remembers that he was stripped of his powers by Daishinkan. Gohan says, I see. Then we have to go for that staff. Cannon says, that's right. Here there are also the super spheres of the dragon. We could bring them together in case something goes wrong. Once the seven spheres are gathered, he will fulfill any wish we ask of him. 
Goku says, I am also impressed that there is a dragon of desires in this multiverse. I think it is a good idea to gather them in case something goes wrong. Vegeta says, that's fine with me. But we cannot be wasting time looking for thing by thing. We will make a team of two. Gohan will come with me, and we will look for the dragon spheres. Cannon, Piccolo, and Kakarot will look for the staff that will take us to the other multiverses. Cannon says, but that would be very dangerous. In addition, how will you know where the dragon spheres are located? Vegeta says, you don't have a tracker or something? Nian would listen to the conversation. She is in his mind. He would remember the words of Cannon. Nian would say, Curse! I will accompany Vegeta and the boy to look for the spheres. Nian would say, pulling out a tracker. Cannon would say, Are you sure of that princess? Nian would reply, I can't let you do that job on your own. I am the princess of this multiverse. It is my duty to fight to recover what belongs to us in addition. Princess Nian, blushing, I would say. Nian would say, I can't let you die. Cannon, I want you to have this. Princess Nian gives Cannon a bracelet. Nian says, I forbid you to die. Even if you die, I don't know how. You will manage, but in the end, you have to return that bracelet. Cannon says, This bracelet was from the queen. I can't have it. Nian says, That's right. That's why I haven't given it to you. I will lend it to you for a moment. You will return it to me when we finish with that damn archon. Vegeta says, Well, I've had enough of your romanticism. We have work to do. Neon embarrassed would say, What did you just say? Cannon would say, I promise I will take care of it and return it to you. Cannon disappears with Goku and Piccolo. Vegeta would say, Very well, we will also leave. Neon would say, The spheres are watered throughout the multiverse. Surely we will find extremely powerful beings. Gohan would say, Very well, I'm ready. Neon disappears with Vegeta and Gohan. Goku and his party would head to Princess Nian's castle for the staff that would allow them to travel from multiverse to multiverse. The only place would be surrounded by Archon subordinates. Cannon would say, we have arrived. We have to enter without anyone noticing. Piccolo would answer, why don't we just end up with all of them? Goku would say, it's true. Let's just end it and everything will be easier. Cannon would reply, we can't do that. If we caused a disaster for sure, Archon would know immediately. Remember that this idiot is looking for Princess Nian. My duty is to protect it. I cannot expose it in this way. Piccolo would say, I understand. You just want to protect your girlfriend. Cannon nervously says, What? She's not my girlfriend? Piccolo would reply, That Goku, why don't you use your teleportation? Goku would say, It's true. Cannon, Piccolo, hold on to me. Goku disappears, appearing inside the castle without anyone noticing. Goku says, Well, we're already inside. Cannon replies, This technique is very useful. Very well, I will go to get the staff. Cannon would find the staff. He takes it, coming back with Goku and Piccolo. Suddenly, Goku and Piccolo feel a great presence. Piccolo says, What is this key? Where does this power come from? Goku would say, I have a bad feeling. I will use my teleportation. Let's go right away. Cannon would say, Let's go. We have nothing to do here. Goku uses his teleportation. Vegeta says, Gohan. Neon says, watch out. He's the right hand of Archon scum. Vegeta would say, damn bastard. Damn it, you pay for that. So you are still hiding around here, princess. Don't try anything stupid. If you don't want me to kill the other mortal, just accompany me. Neon would be worried and say, what does Archon's right hand do here? Don't you know yet? The Great War will soon begin. And we need your power to get the upper hand. Since Boreas Incept stole all the power from Zenosama's Scum. The greatest war in history will soon begin. Vegeta would say, close your cursed mouth. Vegeta throws himself into his Omega Instinct form at Marcus. Marcus, without any difficulty, dodges all the blows of Vegeta. Vegeta says, damn, this guy has an impressive speed. Neon says, it's impossible. If you don't use your maximum power, you won't have a chance against that damn guy. He's as powerful as Archon himself. Don't underestimate it. Goku and the others appear. Marcus would say, So there's still some garbage left in this place. Goku and Piccolo would look at Gohan's corpse on the ground. Piccolo would shout, What happened here? Vegeta responds, When we had already found all the spears, that bastard appeared out of nowhere and killed Gohan. I couldn't do anything when I realized this bastard had pierced Gohan's heart. Gohan's heart would still start beating faster. Goku's power explodes immensely.
Goku with a serious and threatening voice says, Damn bastard, I will make you suffer in the worst possible way. Goku throws himself to hit Marcus. Goku's blows make the whole planet tremble. Marcus receives each of Goku's blows, affecting him in an impressive way. Nian says, how is this possible? The power of that subject is fearsome. Piccolo says, what's wrong? Goku seems to have lost control of himself. Vegeta, worried, says, Damn it, that Kakarot fool allowed himself to be manipulated by that great power. Piccolo says, What do you mean, Vegeta? Recall that transformation chaos mode. Chaos mode? Reaching that level is supremely difficult, but what is even more difficult is to control all that power. If Kakarot continues in this way, I will have to face Kakarot. Marcus says, Damn it, who the hell are you? Goku would say, I will tear off your arms. Goku disappears appearing behind Marcus. He would grab his arms and pull hard, separating his two limbs from his body. Marcus screams in pain. Goku says, This is just the beginning. Marcus screams in horror. Ah, you are a demon! Someone help me! Goku would likewise grab Marcus's legs by completely shattering them. Goku would tear off his other two body limbs. Marcus, with an agonizing voice, would say, Help! He's a demon! Vegeta, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Piccolo would say, That power is an absolute terror. How is it possible for someone like Goku to be consumed by such an evil power? Vegeta says, In the time room, we've trained for many years. Kakarot and I have killed each other many times to try to master the chaos mode. Because we are immortal, we are here. Otherwise, we would be dead right now. It is impossible to defeat Kakarot or me. That's why, if it gets out of control, only I can stop it. Nian would say, You're wrong, Saiyan for Multiverse 1. Vegeta would say, What do you mean, I'm wrong? Nian would reply, If I'm not mistaken, you obtained immortality thanks to the spheres of the dragon. Vegeta would say that's right. Nian would continue. Immortality means nothing against the gods of the multiverses. They can murder you just like any being in these multiverses. When you set foot in my multiverse, your immortality vanishes. Here, they can die. Vegeta would look worried. Cannon would be saying nothing. Marcus would say, Please stop. Don't hurt me anymore. If you're going to kill me, do it at once, but don't torture me anymore. Goku smiles. Goku throws great power at the mutilated Marcus's body, turning it to dust. Suddenly, the whole place is surrounded by Archon's subordinates, for they had to realize the great disaster and power of Goku. Goku would raise his hand, and this serious one would say, Destruction. The entire great army surrounding Goku was immediately annihilated. Nian would be shaking. How can such a being exist? Piccolo would say, I've never seen Goku that way. He seems to enjoy killing. Vegeta would say, Nian, tell me what your plan is. The dragon that dwells in Piccolo told us to look for you. Now that we meet you and we are about to get involved in a war, I imagine you have something in mind to end the Archon and Borea. Nian would say that's right. We already have the dragon of the Multiverse 1. We have the seven dragon spheres of Multiverse 3. We only need the dragon of Multiverse 2 and 4. Vegeta would say, I see you want to gather all the dragons, but what good would that do? Nian would say, Once the four dragons are called, these will form a single being that will have enough power to erase the multiverses and recreate them. What I mean is that once the dragons unite, they will form an invincible being that will be on our side. Vegeta says, Interesting. Vegeta would look at Piccolo. Goku would scream, raising his key. Vegeta would say, Piccolo, Cannon, Nian, you look for the dragon spheres of multiverse 2 and 4. I will stop Kakarot. Piccolo says, But didn't you hear, Vegeta? Remember that you are no longer immortal one, and you can die. Vegeta says, That won't happen. Don't waste your time and get out of here now. I guess you already have the stuff you are looking for. Cannon says, That's right. Vegeta says, Then don't waste time. It's up to you three to save the multiverses. Once I finish here, I will look for a way to go with Kakarot to Multiverse 4. Vegeta approaches Goku. Goku would be killing Archon's subordinates, who would not stop coming. Piccolo would say, Gohan, sorry. Cannon would say, I'm so sorry for that. Like you, it hurts me that a promise of combat, like him, 
dies in this way. Piccolo says, I promise you, Gohan, that we will stop all this. We will be the one who wins. Piccolo, Cannon, and Ian disappear. Vegeta says, Kakarot, your son's death was the trigger for you to lose control. That way, wake up at once. Goku would be looking at Vegeta. Goku laughs a chilling laugh and says, <laughs> I will kill you. Vegeta says, who would say that we would face death once again? I cannot allow you to kill me, and neither can I allow you to die. But if you do not wake up quickly, one of us will have to die. Vegeta transforms using his chaos mode. Vegeta says, fight with me, Kakarot. Meanwhile, in another multiverse, Boria says, The time has come when all multiverses will be controlled by me. Daishinkan says, Great King will be honored to follow him in his reign, but I have a concern. Boria says, Now what happened? Daishinkan says, The Saiyans, Goku and Vegeta, have not yet been defeated. They could be a hindrance. Boria says, Even if they appear in the middle of this, they will not be able to do anything. It is true they have an amazing power, but not to be a god that ever surpasses guys like you. But for me, they are nothing more than garbage. Now we only have to worry about one thing. I'm talking about the damn Archon. Meanwhile, in Multiverse 2, Archon says, What's happening? Why hasn't Marcus arrived? Suddenly, a subordinate of Archon appears and says, Great King! Marcus was easily killed by warriors who appeared in Multiverse 2. Archon says, Warriors who appeared in Multiverse 2? The soldier says, That's right, sir. Archon says, That just goes to show how incompetent he is. Soldiers say, Not only that, sir, more than half of our army was wiped out and destroyed by the same guy. Archon says, What stupidity? I'm just surrounded by stupid cigars. Archon raises his arm, murdering the soldier. Archon says, I don't need idiots. I can handle this alone. Archon walks a few steps, disappearing from the place. Boria says, But who do we have here? Why don't you join me? You just have to give me your multiverse and kneel in front of me. Archon says, What a coincidence that I came to propose the same thing to you, so as not to end your pathetic life. Archon and Boria stand face to face. Goku and Vegeta would be fighting, showing impressive powers, and the whole place would gradually be being destroyed. Goku and Vegeta disappear, appearing in different corners of the three multiverse. The planet they were on would be about to be destroyed by the violence of the Saiyan powers. These would be very evenly matched. This is going to be more complicated than I expected. Kakarot, awaken! Don't let that power consume you! Goku would not hear Vegeta hitting him with a big blow, making him crash to the ground, immediately throwing a large burst of power against Vegeta, blowing up the whole place. Vegeta would wake up a little hurt. Damn, die at once! Vegeta, this is impossible if we continue like this. One of the two will die. What can I do to make Kakarot wake up? I know. Vegeta disappears. Goku, you will not escape. Goku expels great power. Vegeta appears winged from Gohan's body. Goku appears a few meters from Vegeta. Vegeta in his mind would say, if this doesn't work, nothing will. Vegeta turns to his base form. He would be a little weak for having used chaos transformation. What are you up to? I was having fun. Don't want to fight anymore? Vegeta. Kakarot looks carefully. This is your son. Gohan was killed because of Archon of the Multiverse 2. Remember that the gods betrayed us, and that's why we are here. They took Bulma from me and killed Krillin. And if we do nothing, possibly the only family we have left will also be killed by those bastard gods. Goku approaches Gohan's body, totally ignoring Vegeta. Kneels in front of Gohan, running memories through his head. Gohan, Chi-Chi, Goten, boys! Vegeta would use his chaos form again. This would take advantage of the fact that Goku had his guard down to hit him with a big blow to the back of the head. By knocking him out immediately, Goku would faint in his base form. Damn it! That transformation is a double-edged sword. If I'm careless for even a moment, the same thing that happened to Kakarot will could happen to me. Well, that doesn't matter. Now, I would like to know. 
Now I'll be able to reach Piccolo and the others. Piccolo, Cannon, and Mean appear in Multiverse 2. We are in Multiverse 2. We have to find the Spheres of the Dragon. Mean would search for the Spheres on his radar. This radar can detect the Dragon Spheres of any Multiverse we are. Piccolo, what's wrong? Mean, the seven Dragon Spheres are all gathered at one point. That means someone else already has them. We have to go fast. Mean and the others would go to the place where the seven Spheres are gathered. Cannon. Damn it! Piccolo. Let me guess. This is the realm of that one Archon. Cannon. That's right. That bastard has to be in that place. Neen. Curse! We won't have a single chance against that subject if we don't find them. Piccolo. We have no choice but to go for those areas. Hold on. Don't you know how dangerous Archon can be? Piccolo. I'm not interested in that. The being I love most died because of subordinates of that bastard. Also, if I remember correctly, you said that Archon was looking for you. That was the reason why you were hiding. If that bastard is as powerful as you say when you enter his multiverse, he would have already found us. But coincidentally, he still does not appear. Canon. That is true. I do not feel his presence either. I only feel presences that seem to belong to servitude. Let us stop wasting time and fence through the dragon spheres. Piccolo and the others enter the place. Meanwhile, in Multiverse 4, Archon. I find out that you murdered Xenosama. I imagine you only did that to keep his power to be able to face me. Boria. Ha ha ha. I don't need to do that kind of nonsense. Let's say that only Multiverse 1 belongs to me. You were envious that I would take over Multiverse 3, and little by little, rule all the multiverses. You knew that very soon, it would be your turn. So you killed Xenosama, and took over his multiverse before I arrived. But you just made my job easier. Boria would be annoyed by Archon's mockery. Right now, I'm capable of murdering you. What makes you believe that you can talk to me that way? Murder me? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're still too far away to even match my strength. Don't try to compare yourself to me. The king of everything, absolute control of all multiverses will be decided here and now. After Bori's words appear a large number of soldiers, including three warriors who are named as Warriors of Hell. Boria's great army knows them as the most powerful warriors of Multiverse 4. Even Archon knows about them. Daishinkan. This is impressive. Its powers double, not triple my power. Boria. What are you going to do now? I have a large army, and you are alone. I have every chance of winning. Archon. Make no mistake. You of all people know that your army is nothing but scum. All you have are three somewhat outstanding warriors. But the real fight will be when you and I face each other. Boria would show a threatening and serious expression. I know. I just wanted to make it a little more interesting. Archon. Then let's start playing. Archon would soar into the sky. This one extends his hand, causing great waves of energy that would crush the entire army of Boria. The whole place would turn with blood. It was more than obvious that any army could do nothing against a king of everything. Now, only the three warriors of hell are left. But I still wonder, why did he come alone in enemy territory? Archon. Boria, the real battle will begin on the planet Zyros. There, I will be waiting for you. Boria would only laugh. So, you already chose your grave. Archon. Not. I chose yours. Archon disappears. Daishinkan. Just escaped? Boria. Do not be stupid. It is obvious that this place will not endure a fight between two kings of the entire planet. Zyros is a good place. Daishinkan. What kind of planet is that? A planet as big as a universe. The perfect planet for this fight. Daishinkan. And where is that place? That planet is located in the middle of the four multiverses. Daishinkan would start asking more questions, when Boria would start to get angry. Stop asking so many questions, or I'll kill you! Daishinkan, somewhat frightened, would be silent. Boria. Warriors of Hell, join me to defeat Archon! Daishinkan, you have the power of Xenosama. Give it to me to strengthen me more. Meanwhile, Piccolo and the others have found the Dragon Spheres. Mysteriously, they only encountered weak beings in Multiverse 2. Cannon effortlessly knocks out the guards who protected the Dragon Spheres. Nina would take the spheres when suddenly a child appears. His name was Bot, 
a weak child, frightened and emaciated. Bod, please, leave those fears. Please don't take them away, I beg you. Bod kneels in front of Neen. Bod, please, if those fears are taken away, we will all be annihilated by the king of everything. Ganon, Princess Neen. Neen would be worried and somewhat confused. Bod, Princess Neen? Princess Neen! The boy would hug Neen tightly and tearfully plead. I have heard from you when my father was still alive, and he told me that our only hope was the powerful Princess Neen and the Saiyan Knight who protected her. Child, how did you know about us? Bod, because I and my family belong to Multiverse 3. Neen and Cannon would be surprised by the boy's words. Cannon, wait, tell me what happened. Why are you here? Bod would fall to the ground and begin to tremble. Cannon, are you okay? Just by thinking about it again, my body does not stop shaking. But I will tell you as my father had told me. When the Multiverse 3 was a quiet place and ruled by the Queen Cyrus mother of Princess Neen, you could breathe peace and tranquility. But all this disappeared when warriors of the Multiverse 2 appeared. They murdered and enslaved the entire population. All those who refused to be slaves would be annihilated, whether children or women. So 30% of the population were cruelly killed. My family had no choice but to be slaves to the damn Archon. Once we arrived here, something worse awaited us. They were preparing us to die. They were using us as bait. The Multiverse 2 and 4 would be at war, and we were the ones most affected. We didn't eat anything. Our only food was the grass and leftovers of Archon's army. Little by little, Archon's army was diminishing. Every day, Multiverse 2 and 4 had their conflicts. My father died, as did my brothers and my mother. The only family I have is my younger brother. There is almost nothing left. All those I knew died either because of the war or because Archon's army killed them for fun. I don't want to live anymore. Princess Neen, if this is life, I don't want to live anymore. Since I was born, my life has been hell. The only reason I stay alive is to protect my brother. Alive in the shadows with some survivors of Multiverse 3, I am the only one who is able to look for food. The vast majority have died of hunger. Of millions of inhabitants of Multiverse 3, now we are only about 10, counting me. Neen had been petrified by the boy's words. Piccolo, that guy is the same demon. Where have you been all this time? Please help us, don't let us die. Neen, sorry for being so cowardly while all that was going on. I lived all this time, but now our only hope is these dragon spheres. Cannon. Boy, I promise you that we will do everything possible to defeat Archon and end all this war, and give them a better life for you and your brother. Bod would start crying. Bon kneels in front of Neen and Cannon. Bod, please help us. We have suffered so much. I wouldn't know what to do if I lost my little brother. Please, I trust you. I also found out that Archon went to Multiverse 4. Hurry up, he could be back at any moment. Neen would be both furious and heartbroken at the plight of her people. Neen, let's hurry. Suddenly, a power shot is heard. Bod would fall to his knees to the ground. He'd die, shedding tears in his eyes. Archon. So finally, the princess appeared. I imagine that you have something to do with the annihilation of the soldiers I sent to look for you in the Multiverse 3. Tell me, who among you murdered Marcus? Aeon says, bastard. Cannon replies, damned. Archon says, How is this possible? Explain to me how scum like you could defeat Marcus and all my soldiers. Never mind. I'll end your miserable lives right here. Bastard, how dare you make slaves out of the inhabitants of Multiverse 3? You only use them for your stupid wars. Children and old people suffer because of you. <laughs> Children, elderly, for the war? You are wrong, said Archon. Cannon replies, that we were wrong? The boy you just murdered is the child from Multiverse 3 who barely survived. You are wrong, because they are only food for my beasts. This guy is the same demon. He doesn't have a drop of compassion for children. That's right. The useless people of Multiverse 3, who were not good for fighting, were only good for being food for the strongest. So the children in the Enderly were the most sought after. Neon wouldn't hold his anger. Neon attacks Archon, but Archon doesn't flinch. Neon's punches are useless against Archon's tough skin. Archon grabs Neon by the neck. You have the guts, or are you very stupid? Who in their right mind would come to the wolf's mouth to be devoured? Archon would tighten Neon's throat more and more with the intention of murdering her. Cannon would say stop.
stop with its Ultra Instinct lashes out with all its force against Archon. But just like that, Cannon is no rival. Cannon would strike again and again, but his blows fail to make any effect. The level of that guy is far superior to us. Even the Ultra Instinct can do nothing to him. Damn, I can't stand by and do nothing. Dragon would say, Namekusai, listen to me carefully. It's you. You are no match for Archon. The great difference of power is abysmal. Do you think I don't know that? I will teleport you to Multiverse 3 to meet up with the Saiyans, and go to Multiverse 4 to look for the last spheres. Hold on. Are you telling me to leave Neon and Cannon behind? That's right. If I take them all, Archon will come for us and it will be the end. And if you stay and fight, we will all die, and the multiverses will never be saved. Archon hits Cannon. This would fall a few meters from Piccolo. And in its base form, without moving a single centimeter. I can't. I can't let them die like this. I'm sorry, but right now my priority is to save the world. And Piccolo disappears. Archon says, That bastard just ran away. Those are the people you love so much. Neon faints. Archon says, I won't kill you yet. I'll let you live a few minutes more. Piccolo appears in Multiverse 3 and winged from his fall, the seven spears of Multiverse 2. Vegeta says, What are you doing here, Piccolo? Piccolo would see everything around him surprised. Everything would be very destroyed by the fight of Goku and Vegeta. Piccolo would say, Damn it. Neon and Cannon must be dead right now, and it's all my fault for not doing anything. Vegeta would reply, What? Neon and Cannon are dead. What happened? Explain yourself. Piccolo would say, I don't know yet, but they were easily defeated by that Archon curse. The dragon once again possesses Piccolo's body and says, Listen to me very well, Saiyan. This may be our only chance. We have already gathered the spheres of Multiverse 1, 2, and 3. You just need to gather the sphere of the dragon of Multiverse 4 in order to have a chance against the gods of the whole. Vegeta would say, Don't bother me. We can't against those guys. We don't need the dragon spheres to stop them. Dragon would say, I more than anyone know the great power they possess to be mere mortals who even surpass the highest ranking deities of their multiverse. It truly is impressive, but that does not mean that they have a chance of defeating a god of all as Arkan and Borea is. Or did you forget the first time you met Borea? Vegeta would remember with the ease with which Borea had defeated them and say, I understand, but tell me, what will happen after having gathered all the spears of the four multiverses? Goku would say, Gohan! Vegeta would say, At last you awaken, Kakarot. Oh, what happened? Why is this whole place destroyed? I see. So you don't remember anything. Goku would see Gohan's body a few meters from him. Goku would say, Damn bastards, I swear I will defeat them. I will not allow them to continue killing innocent people. Vegeta would say, Listen to me well, Kakarot. I will tell you everything. I will do so that you do not commit the same stupidity again when you saw the body of Gohan you got out of control. You killed a complete army, and you killed the one who killed Gohan in the worst possible way. To calm your lack of control, I had to face you with my form chaos. What remains of this place is the result of our fight, but somehow I managed to knock you out and prevent one of the two from dying. Goku would be surprised. If I had done it myself, it wouldn't be so serious, but the problem is that someone with a heart as pure as yours enjoyed killing. That's the worrying thing. Seriously? I did that? Apparently the power of the chaos mode dominated you. And that happened because you got out of control. And I know that this transformation goes beyond just obtaining a colossal power. Every time we transform into chaos mode, this contaminates our mind. This power is an evil power. But it is the only thing we have to stop these guys. I understand. I regret the problems that will not happen again. But now, what should we do? As I said before, they have to gather the seven spheres that are missing. They have to go to Multiverse 4. Okay, but first answer me the question I asked you before. What will happen when the spheres of all the multiverses 1, 2, 3, and 4 are assembled? The being who will decide the fates of the multiverses will appear. Explain. God of gods, I am part of his soul. Part of his soul? A long time ago, even before the kings of all existed on a planet called Xyrux that is located in the center of the four multiverses, nothingness created a being that today only the dragons of the spheres and the ex-queen of Multiverse 3 know about. Who exactly is that subject? He is the creator of the multiverses, kings of the whole, and judge of life. Are you telling me you are part of that guy?
So it is, when the creator of the whole created the kings of all, this simply divided his soul into four parts. And those four parts of the dragon are the spears. You said it. Part of my power is to fulfill any desire. But that is only something insignificant to the creator god. Listen to me well. God creator is not a guy you can touch. It's not a guy you can beat or stare into the eyes. He is the judge of life. Absolute perfection. But still, if we gather all the spears and the four parts, unite them, it will not mean victory. There is a possibility that we will lose everything even though I have the soul of my lord. When all the dragons are one, my memories with you all that will die. What are you trying to say? Is that by invoking that god we are invoking a double-edged sword? That's right. That is absurd. If it can harm us, I don't see the need to invoke your god. But it is the only way you can save the multiverses. Kakarot and I will take care of it. Understand that you are no one in a match for the kings of everything. You forgot something. We're Saiyans. We love to fight, and that's a fact for our rival. It's up her sleeve. Suddenly, the dragon disappears. Damn, the staff dragon came back to possess my body, but apparently can't do it for long. Then, what will we do first? We go to rescue Neon and Cannon. Get ready for the fight against Archon. But we have no way to teleport to that multiverse. Comment! If I use the transformation of the chaos mode, I can do it. Goku would see Gohan's body again and say, Son, I promise you that I will do everything possible to protect the world. Goku transforms. Come on! Cannon says, Damn! Oh, where am I? Suddenly a small child appears and says, Mister, is it okay? Cannon would say, Yes. What is this place? Cannon would see everything around it. Where did so many hungry and sick people appear from? The child walks a few steps away from Cannon. This one would start to cry and say, Brother, I'm sorry for not coming out to protect you. Cannon would notice that the child was crying at Bod's body. Cannon would say, Then uh, are the only thing left of Multiverse 3? The child would say, That's right. There's nothing left. We just have to wait. Uh, hope what? Wait for what? That Archon will kill us or simply starve to death. Cannon would say, Don't say that. I'll do my best to get out of here and defeat Archon. From afar, I can see how that guy killed my older brother and also how they defeated you with a single blow. So you're Bod's little brother? Let me tell you, hope is the last thing to be lost. As long as I'm still standing, I will fight. I'll be leaving right now. Maybe my Princess Neon is still alive. Lord, I trust you. Avenge my brother's death, please. The boy gives the staff that Neon had with him to Cannon. Cannon appears and says, Child, I promise to give you the peace and quiet that your brother longed for. Cannon disappears. Damn it! Appear once and for all! Cannon would feel a faint presence and say, Princess Neon! Princess Neon would be moments away from dying. Neon dying says, Planet Xyrux. And Princess Neon dies after those words.